It's time for church. If we could get everybody in, shut those doors, get a songbook, and stand with us. Now, listen, we need everybody singing this morning, all right? Brother Gary will lead us in a song. Grab you a hymn book, turn to page 134. shake hands what a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound praise the Lord I'll have a new life graves all a bursting saints are shouting heavenly beauty all around praise the Lord I'll have a new life glory glory never sad in his 
like this I'll be glad Praise the Lord I'll have a new life If the ushers will come have the ushers come as they get ready to sing another song of everything that you give this morning. We'll go to Brother Jacob Berry. We appreciate him and his family being with us in his ministry. So everything that you give this morning, we'll go to Brother Jacob. Let's pray. God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for uh, once again being in your house. Lord, we pray, especially for Brother Jacob today, give him the liberty, Lord, uh, to speak your words. And God, I pray that you just touch you each and every heart. God, help us to do our part to support him and his ministry and uh, do all that we can, God, in your precious name. Amen. On the resurrection morning, the light sound. Sown in the weakness, raised in power, ready to live in paradise. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Glory, glory, never sad. No more pain, there'll be no more strife. And in his likeness, I'll be glad. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Third verse, what a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Grace all a bursting saints are shouting, heavenly beauty all around. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Glory, glory, never sad. No more pain, there'll be no more strife. In his likeness, I'll be glad. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Amen. Good old song. Good to have the Parson family with us this morning. And I know they've been sick. So I we'll just we're gonna give it over to the Lord and you just let him have his way. Give them a hand as they come to sing for us this morning. And when they get finished, Brother Jacob will be preaching for us. Pastor Will should have called us the Muppets this morning because uh, I'm going to sound like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> but that's okay. I gave my girls a pep talk last night or this morning sometime, and I said, you know, I love this because then we realize that in our weakness, he is strong. He is strong. And it's right. all about him anyways. And you yes, all amen. have squeaked and, and at times, you know, maybe when you're singing. But um, I said, Lord, if you can, one way or another, whether you use my voice up here or out there, you're going to get my praise today. Right. Amen. And I thank him that he gave me what little bit I got this morning. We're going to just praise him. Well, you all have asked all week long, when is Miss Avery going to sing? Well, here she is, and she's ready to sing for you. Do you want to start off with Beautiful Day? She loves this little song that my sister Tammy wrote. It's just called Beautiful Day. Hasn't the Lord given us a beautiful day today? Amen. Much warmer than Indiana. I got a lot to praise him for. <laughs> Go ahead, sis. Beautiful day, oh beautiful day, I'm looking at a beautiful day. So many blessings are coming in my way. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Amen. Good job. Good job, baby. Okay. He loves me like I was his only child. I never felt so loved before. I could never ask for more. He loves me like I was his only child. God really loves me. Yes, he really loves me. He loves me like I love 
is only child. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. the soul never dies and there won't ever be a tear to fall from your eyes and death just won't be mentioned in that city so fair though I've never been to heaven I Sure and long to go there. Though these feet have never walked on the streets paved with gold, and though these eyes they have never seen all the beauty untold, my head. A mansion that someday I will own. And though I've never been to heaven, I'm longing to go. How about you this morning? Are you longing for heaven to be your home? They say it's made by God's own hands Where the redeemed will one day gather On those glorious shores we'll all stand I can hear a sound of welcome Coming across that distant tide Oh, I can hardly wait to get there and to step my feet inside. Though these streets have never walked on, the streets paved with gold, and though these eyes they have never seen, all the beauty and soul. That someday I will own. And though I've never been to heaven, I'm longing to go. And though I've never been to heaven, I'm gonna be. The singers are tired. 
the church as we know it is losing its fire and some are discouraged from bearing the load but we must determine to keep pressing on and it's just one more soul where to walk down the aisle worth every struggle, it would be worth every mile, a lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. yesterday and he still loves me just as much today as he did yesterday I am so thankful for his blessings and for his mercy though I'm so unworthy he gives me a reason to sing a reason to rejoice a reason to be happy because my name is written down in glory and I'm gonna get to see him face to face one day it could be today this could be our last service like they've been saying But we're one service closer to seeing the God of glory. I love him this morning. What would he want you to give this morning? Your very best is the least that we can offer him this morning. So though we're squeaking, we're not really singing to you. I'm sorry. But we're doing our best for the king who died for us. And I love him so much this morning. So if you'll pardon us while we worship the Lord, try not to pay much attention. But if you're praising him, you won't really see us at all. So I'm thankful. Felt they would die. They 
Jesus, he is always so near. He lives in my heart and he hears when I cry. I'll call on his name till the storm passes by. We read in the Bible how he song, but we didn't know that a month and a day before, brother, can I have more monitor? A month and a day before, um, a gentleman was called up to the piano. His name is Larry. The pastor said, Larry, come on up and sing a special. Came up to the piano and he sang uh, The Love of God. I believe that was the song. He did the first verse in the chorus and the second verse in the chorus and he went to do the third verse and he said, I want you to listen. This is my favorite verse. Played a little bit and then he lowered the key. The pastor was sitting up on stage and he said, I don't know much about music, but I, I knew that he lowered the key and I thought, well, maybe it was too high for him. And he sat there and he just played just a little bit and he said, I'm having a heart attack. Hit the keys just a few more times and he said, I'm serious, I'm having a heart attack. And he fell over on the piano. So thankful that day that there were three nurses and a gentleman who worked in the heart unit. And they began to do CPR for the next 20 to 25 minutes. No pulse for 20 minutes. Right in front of the church is the police station. The policeman came over and they told him, he said, just give up, he's gone. His jaw locked, he turned gray, he lost, uh, lost his bowels. They said, everything that happens to you when you die, yeah. he was gone. The paramedics came in, they shocked him twice, could get no pulse, no heartbeat. They ran him to the hospital, got there, and then the wife and the pastor sat in the waiting room and a bunch of the family sat there for what seemed to be hours. The doctor came back in and called the pastor and the wife back and went back into the room and the man is sitting up, laughing and talking. You see, the whole time that he didn't have a pulse over here and they're working on him. The congregation's over here calling out to the Lord. You see, when death comes, or sickness comes, and death seems so near, I'm going to call on the Master. Because I know He'll get there on time. Can I tell you that the doctor came in and said, I don't understand it. 
There's no blockage. There is no reason for a heart attack. 20 to 25, 30 minutes, whatever it was, there's no brain damage without the lack of oxygen. The only thing the man has today are broken ribs from your CPR maneuver. (laughs) Can I tell you that whenever you need him, he's always there. True story, call Russell, Kentucky. They'll tell you, we call him the dead man. He was there that day and the pastor said, I need the dead man to come up and finish his song. (laughs) He said, I didn't see Lazarus raised from the dead, but I saw that man lay there dead for 20 minutes, y'all. God is still raising people from the dead. He's still saving souls. He's still healing hearts. He's still bending marriages back together. Whatever you need today, that is exactly what God is. Sing it one more time, sissy. Why should I worry? Why should we worry? Why should I fear when the very same Jesus He said on the same yesterday, today, and forever. He lives in my heart and He hears when I cry. I'll call on His name till the storm passes.
appreciate my girls this morning so much. And um, some of you uh, do not know the Parsons. And um, so I want to introduce my family to you. Yes, these are my girls. And um, somebody asked me this morning, are all three of those yours? I said, yes. <laughs> Olivia is 20 years old now and um, just loves the Lord. And I appreciate uh, their walk with Christ. And um, makes me so proud. And we'll start crying, and then I won't be able to do anything. Uh, it makes me so proud that they've decided to follow Christ. This is not something that we force them to do because God called us to do it. But um, oftentimes they've come to us and said, we love to sing, and we love doing what we're doing, but Mommy, what else can we do? And I love that. Um, the Lord has placed inside their hearts, I do believe, a servant's heart to serve others and um, we've offered this week to help clean and people wouldn't let us and <laughs> but we've actually learned it I believe from you all this is our seventh year is that right coming yes. and um, we walked away amazed at the things that we were not doing and we saw from you and um, we decided we saw God in yeah. you right. amen so all week long when you've cleaned the toilets and when you've swept and picked up our trash I saw God today, this week in the service I saw, I saw him on the stage but I saw him when everybody left and they were so hungry and they were over there but you were still picking up and cleaning we saw God thank you from our hearts but that's Olivia and she does a great job and I appreciate her she's um, doing some online college classes and somebody said we've got um, we've already got her life planned she's going to go be an English teacher which is what she's majoring in and uh, she's going to come back here and work for the school and <laughs> uh, you'd see the Parsons right here with her <laughs> Chloe's 16 years old and she does a great job loves the Lord and um I wish I had her height and her voice today. She loves the Lord, and she was the one that actually came and said, Mommy, what else can I do to show him how much I love him? I want to work for him, and I love that. And then you all met Miss Avery, who's our pride and joy, four years old. <laughs> She's got the biggest smile. Please don't give her any more candy. <sighs> I've never said that from stage, but everywhere we go, she's got a big old jaw full of something. And... Um, she, I told her, I said, don't tell him not to give you anymore. She's got a little cavity now. And so we got to go to the dentist. I said, um, if they give you a piece of gum, ask for a dollar as well to cover <laughs> that dentist bill that we're going to get. <laughs> Over on the piano is the love of my life for 21 years. God blessed me with Kenny Parsons to be my husband. He loves loves the Lord. I said, Lord, would you send me somebody? I remember being in my bedroom down by my chair praying and asking God, Lord, who do you have for my life? I had seen divorce. I'd seen some heartache in, uh, in some brothers' lives, and I thought, Lord, I don't ever want to experience that. So, Lord, would you send me somebody that loves you more than I love you? And he did exactly that, and he sent Kenny to me, and I love him today. Gonna let the girls sing. Actually, Miss Tammy, Yes, come on. You did it to me the other night. Come on, one more song. Here's one that she wrote. And uh, Olivia had this on her heart today, and I didn't know if I'd be able to even talk or sing. And I squeaked and squawked up here a little bit. And uh, then, uh, here comes the voice of voices. Don't you enjoy her singing? Her writing is just amazing. Somebody asked me if I write, and um, my name, that's about it. <laughs> I think I put five words into a song one time, and that's been the extent of my writing. I watched her as you all preached to us, and I knew when it was a good line, she'd reach down and grab her purse and get a pad and paper and start writing. And um, But she gets all of them through your messages um, that are preached here. I've got a great songwriter. She wrote this one a long, long time ago. So listen, they done it once to him. One time they nailed him to a cross, but they're never, they're going to never do it again. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Never again will he be mocked and left to die. Never again will he know pain. Cause when he comes again, he's gonna reign. He done it once, he'll never do it again. He's done it once, he'll never do it again. Never have 
never again will he know shame and never again will he take the blame they turn it once they'll never do it again oh they turn it once they'll never do it again too that um, I just thank you so much for your hospitality and the good lodging and the good food and just the warmth of your friendship and we just love and appreciate you all so very much and we just know what it takes to do all this to do something special we've done so many concerts and different events up home and so I know the hard work it takes and we appreciate you so much thank you for having us I think we've, you know, I think we've been coming here about nine years now. Nine years ago that we come in and just wanted to have church, and we sit over in the corner, hid back in that little corner back over there, just to listen to see what was going on here. And a, a pastor, a friend of ours, invited us. Yeah. Lived up north there, and uh, we didn't know if we was in the right place when we pulled in the parking lot. We're used to little churches. We like little churches. But we love this one. We pulled in the parking lot. We had no idea what God had in the store here. But he seems to know what we don't know. He knows everything we don't know. And he does things we'll never know. And he moves in ways we'll never know. And I love him this morning. I love this church. And I was sitting in all this week at the movement of God. Yes. Not man or anything else was going on. But I was sitting all with the movement of God. That's all we look for. And sometimes you just thank you, Lord. Wow. Amen. How great you are. I sat there this week and enjoyed, enjoyed church, enjoy church. We want to go to church and enjoy church. It's not worth going unless you enjoy it. And we try to live our lives. Everything we do, we're here to please God with. Everywhere we go, we don't, we're not to please the church or the people there. We're just looking to please God. And this morning, that's all we want to do here. I know God's moved in great ways. But we just want to please Him this morning. So as you come in this morning, there's things for you to do. There's things for all of us to do. we got to please Him. That's the most important thing. Amen. Turn it over. the last time I checked, Last time I checked, the Muppets didn't sing like that. <laughs> it's certainly good to be back here. 
Every year it just keeps getting better and better and better. I had a, a pretty good time having a hard year two years ago. One thing right after another. My grandma even had a triple bypass surgery. She was almost to the point of dying. We didn't even realize it until the surgery happened. It devastated me and my whole family. And then we come down here. It was like the burden was lifted. So I thank the Lord for the miracles that he's done in this place. I'd like to thank Brother Will and Brother Roger for having us here every year. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And as you're turning there, in the theater of your mind, I want you to picture and just imagine that you're living 4,000 years ago somewhere over somewhere close to Iraq and you're a shepherd keeping watch over your flock. I find it interesting that Moses was a shepherd and he was looking for his lost sheep. Doesn't that sound familiar? And instead of finding this lost sheep, he finds the shepherd. And he wanders into a holy place where God himself abides in the burning bush. I want you to picture not me preaching this, but rather God himself speaking this in an authoritative voice directly to you. For we are truly standing on holy ground. Shall we stand in reverence to the reading of the word of God? The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, in verse 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. 
and this is my memorial unto all generations. Let us pray. When I was standing in the Lincoln Memorial, I had to go to Washington, D.C. I'm a big history guy. And when I stood in the Lincoln Memorial, I, I sat there for a minute, and there sat Honest Abe sitting on his great white throne. And it was as if he himself was alive and looking right at me, plastered on the walls of his memorial were the words of the man that would change the course of history, not only for America, but for all mankind. The word and the man, the word and the man was infused together at that memorial. Abraham Lincoln, they say, was a giant of a man standing an incredible six feet four inches tall. He was the nation's largest and tallest president. But yet, he was humble enough to consider himself the least of all presidents. What many people forget or ignore the fact that Abraham Lincoln was one of the finest Christians known to man. It was he that said, I fall on my knees and pray to the God of heaven when it seems as if I have no wealth, nowhere else to go. It was Abraham Lincoln that said, Bible, the Bible is the greatest book known to mankind. With these words and many others, he signed, he signed the 13th Amendment. And Abraham Lincoln dared to believe the words of the Bible where it says, all men are created equal. He took the Bible literally when it said, God is no respecter of persons. He believed the words 
of Thomas Jefferson that all men are created equal, that we have been endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Abraham Lincoln said, and I like, I like this, what he said, this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom in this government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. That's all well and good. But when I stood there in the Lincoln Memorial, I couldn't help but think of one greater than Abraham Lincoln who sits on the great white throne and calls the earth his footstool. I thought of one that is higher than the heavens. I thought of one who is greater than the greatest. I thought of the God who said unto Moses so profoundly, I am that I am. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. I am that I am. It was the I am that I am that called Moses unto Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. And he set free those who were captive and held bondage into slavery of Egypt. He led them across the the Jordan and into the promised land. He led them across the Red Sea and into the promised land. What does that mean? That means he set him free out of sin, out of the bondage of Pharaoh, who was a picture of the devil. And when they crossed through the Red Sea, they were baptized into a new life. They may have wandered in the wilderness for 40 years but thank God they didn't have to stay there they crossed over Jordan and into the promised land and 2,000 years ago Two thousand years after the time of Moses, God would do it again. But this time, it wasn't for a small group of people. But it was for the entire human race. Whenever God said, "I am that I am." He was referring to his Hebrew name. Yahweh. Yahweh is Hebrew for Jehovah. Jehovah in Hebrew means to be self-sufficient. That means I don't need you. I don't need you. I am God all by myself he said unto Job where were you 
when I formed the foundation of the world. Where were you? Where I carved out the mountains. Where were you when I made the ocean and the sea? Before you were ever born, I knew who you were. I numbered the hairs of your head. I am the master potter. I am the Lord, your righteousness. He is. I am that I am. He was saying, I am God, and I sit on the throne. I don't care what anybody else says or does. I don't care what the devil, what the government says or does. I don't care what the atheist or the ACLU says. I am God. Nobody can take my title away from me. I am that I am. And sometimes I think we forget as humans how powerful he is, how great he is. I am that I am. The name of God is most holy and most sacred. The Jews couldn't even say his name. So they just referred to him as the Lord. They, they called him Adonai, which is Hebrew for Lord. The name Lord. The, the, the word Lord means somebody that has rule or authority over you. So sometimes we always think that we're bigger than God. I can do whatever I want to. That's not so, my friend. Because whether you like it or not, when you accept, whether you accept him or not, he is Lord. 164 times in the Old Testament, he tells the Hebrew children, I am the Lord, he said, I am the Lord, and I change not. They didn't understand exactly who he was. But they knew the power that he possessed as Israel conquered many nations. And they were taught from an early age to fear and reverence the Almighty God. They would say, look what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. You better respect the Holy One of Israel. You better respect the Lord. For he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. <coughs> but still, they didn't know who he was. And so, God begins slowly to reveal himself unto mankind. And he says to the great patriarch and prophet Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward in Genesis 15.1. And then 
he goes on in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 1. He says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. He said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 3.12, I am, I am merciful. Every time he says that in the Old Testament, he is referring to a who. See, everything in the Old Testament points to future events. <coughs> so he was telling us in the Old Testament who he is, but they still couldn't get it. And so God said, all right, I'll just come down there and I'll show you who I am. And so the I am that I am wrapped himself in the flesh and Jehovah God came to us in the form of a man and he begins showing us who he is and showing us the power that he possessed and how we can apply his power and authority in our life as an individual. He's not only God of the whole world and everything. He is God of our life, of our hearts. That means he can give us power and rule over everything if we trust in him. And he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. And he tells us who he is. But he not only tells us who he is, but now in the New Testament, he tells us what he is. What he is in our life. He tells us how he can be applied to our life. In John 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He said in John, is anybody hearing this? He said in John 8, 23, I am from above and you're of this world. I am not of this world he said in John 8 58 before Abraham was I am he said in John 10 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved he said in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He said in John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He said in John 
14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the lie. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said in John 15, 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. He said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He said in John chapter he said in first Peter 1 16 be ye holy for I am holy he said in revelations 1 18 I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore And has the key of hell and of death. He said in Revelations chapter number 22 and verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last I am in Revelation 22 18 he said I am the root and the offspring of David the bright and the morning star I am that I am As in the words of the songwriter, so eloquently put it, he said, I am the bread and I am the wine. I am your future, so leave your past behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I am your tabernacle. I am your jubilee. I am hope. I am peace. I am joy. I am rest. I am your comfort and relief from distress. I am strength. I am faith. I am love. I am power. I am your freedom. This very hour. A, po- a poem says, I am loved. I am hated. I am joy anticipated. I am the hand on the surgeon's knife. I am the very hand that saved your life. I am the book from Genesis to Revelation. I am the only hope for your salvation. I am the first and the last. I am the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in one cast. Who am I? I will tell you even as I told Moses I am that I am. So why did God say unto Moses I am that I am. He was saying whatever you stand in need of I am. So what do you stand in need of today? 
Everybody in here. I guarantee you. Everybody in here has a need somewhere in their life. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, He is. I am. That I am. Whatever you need. If your body is sick and you need a healer, I am. That I am. If you're lost and undone without any hope, I am. That I am. If you're burdened down with the cares of this life and you need a comforter, I am. That I am. If you need help throughout the day, if you need help in your church, in your personal life, I am. That I am. You know what? If you want to know the truth, I really don't need this wheelchair because I am that I am. If you want to know the truth, I don't need a ventilator because I am that I am. I don't need a tray or a feeding tube because I am that I am. He is everything to me. He's all that I want. He's all that I ever will will need. I am that I am. And so, and so here we stand on holy ground today. And he's trying to tell us, trying to remind us that he is everything that we need for he is I am that I am and God said unto Moses take your shoes off for your standing on holy ground if you die and go to hell you'll have to trample over his holiness and his greatness to get there for I am that I am take your shoes off humble yourself down for your standing on holy ground. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're in here, I don't care who you are or where you come from. Would you say to the great I am, I have a need in my life, whatever it is, would you raise your hand? Say, Jacob, pray for me. All hands, ought to be raised. All, all hands ought to be raised right now. Everybody has a need. What about you, young people? We see that hand up in the balcony. God bless you. We see these hands down here. All those 
all those that raised your hands and those that didn't. Would you come and humbly bow at this altar and say, Lord, you're everything that I need. Shall we stand all across this building? Would you come right now? Young people, everybody, come down here and say, you are holy. You are holy. Would you come? Would you come? Come on, young people. It's open for you. Would you come? Come on, adults. Would you say, you are holy and you are worthy to be praised. I want to challenge everybody under the sound of my voice to come to this altar and say, you're everything that I stand in need of. Would you come? standing before your friends you're you're standing before the I am the great I am would you come would you come for we are standing in his presence on hold I still feel like there's some young people that need to make a move. The Lord knows all your needs. It's not just for the adults, it's for you too. And adults, would you come to this altar and give all your needs, all your cares unto God? Would you come? memorial his presence his memorial to him is to have your name written in the Lamb's book of life would you come David said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Why don't we want anything? Because we have everything. All in Jesus. his name as they sing this song.
say is wow stay right there Jacob stay right there I want you to look up here not one note not one Bible everything you just heard was right up here that was amazing that was powerful and I'm telling you as I was sitting back there the Lord said tell the ushers to get the bags and we're going to take another offering for him so when you go out, if the Lord impresses on you to give him something else, listen, they go all over the country. I don't know if you notice, Yvonne's up here, but guess who's in the very back? Joe's back there. It's a team, all three of them. And I'll tell you, I want to lift them up in prayer, and I want to support them. So if you have something to give, the ushers will have something in the back. I, I want you to, to let it go. But that, that was powerful. And I don't know if you saw, there was about 100 kids that came walking in or come walking in up here upstairs. And I saw about 20 of them get their iPads out and start videoing. Because he can reach people that others can't reach. And I'm telling you, that iPad's going to go to someone else and be sent to someone else. And that message is just going to go. And I, let's give him a hand for that great, great message that we heard this morning. We love him. We appreciate them. So you give as God lays on your heart. All right? We'll have a break at lunch today, and we'll come back tonight. The Primitives will be singing tonight at 7 p.m. We'll serve dinner at 5 p.m. All right? All hearts and minds clear. Brother Scotty, would you dismiss us in prayer? <laughs> 